1968, a 1.12 ERA, 268 strikeouts. Somehow he lost nine games. Yeah, I'm still mad about that. You should be. <laughs> yeah. uh, 22 oh, and nine, and you lose nine games with a 1.12. Well, let, let me interject something. Bob finally decided that every time he pitched, we had to face the ace of the other staff. We'd have, we'd have to face Marichal, Perry, Drysdale, Koufax, the likes of that. Ferguson Jenkins with the Ferguson Cubs. Ferguson Jenkins with the Cubs. Yeah. I talked with Red about that one time. I said, Red, uh, you've pitched me against the other team's best pitcher uh, all the time. Why don't we switch that around a little bit? He said, well, if you beat them, we can sweep. I said, if they beat me, they can sweep. <laughs> Even though you had pretty good backup in those <laughs> days too. Yeah. yeah Nelson Browse, Ray Washburn, Steve Carlton. Dick Hughes. Dick mm -hmm. Hughes in 67. And we're underway here in the second inning. The great Bob Gibson, the Hall of Famer, is with us. 1968 for you. Uh, does it define you, you think, in many ways, the 1.12? No. I, I, you know, I had a, a, an exceptional year that year. Um, and I don't think that you can define a player by the best year he ever had. You got to kind of take a, a, a look at his whole career. Then you come to an average, and that's pretty much who he is. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's why I remember one year Joe Torre hit 353 or something like that, and then the next year he was hitting 300, and he was trying to pull his hair out, even though he didn't have much hair left. He had 230 yeah. hits that year. Yeah, and uh, I asked him. I says uh, he was agonizing about it, and I said, Joe. Uh, answer this for me. He said, "What?" Well, I said, "Do you really think you're a 353 hitter?" He said, "No." I, said, I rest my case. There you go. Is it fun seeing the guys again? Oh, it's always fun. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you take a while to recognize a guy because of the color of his hair. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you one of the uh, one of the funny things that happened among many many things that go on in the dugout, and not a lot of people. Realized, but Dick Schofield was a lifetime about a 230 hitter or something like that. 217. 217. <laughs> well, well, Dick Schofield would come in. He'd slam. He was what we call the a, uh, a red A. Yeah. And uh, he'd slam it, break his bat, smash his helmet, and Bob said, "Dick, come here." After after one of these tirades, he said, "Let me show you something." See this right here. This is lifetime batting average. You're a 217 hitter. What'd you expect? <laughs> Everybody in the dugout just roared. Hey, after a couple Ducky of expletives, then he'd go yeah, off somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and even Dick, even Dick started laughing about it after a while. Yeah, it was ridiculous. He's throwing tantrum. How much trouble did you give your teammates for not scoring runs that year? You know, it seems like I was giving them trouble all the time. Uh, <laughs> it was hard, but uh, you know, you, you stop and think about it, and you look back into uh, the years of the '66 and '67 and '68 and '69. We had some of the best pitchers in baseball history back then, and everybody that we faced, every team we faced, had two or three guys. That you just weren't going to score runs off of, and that's just the way it was. You an, exa an example of that was as Bob, as the 1.12 ERA, Juan Marichal won 26 games that year and didn't win the Cy Young. Denny McLean on the other side wins 31. It mm -hmm. was the year of the pitcher, though, Bob. But yes. you're kind of the guy that is the face of 68. Yeah. Well, they got to have somebody to hate, and so that was me. <laughs> you didn't mind it though, did you? Did not mind it. Did not mind it at all. Bob Gibson. There it is. The 34 starts, 22 and nine over 300 innings, 1.12 ERA. An incredible year. There's a strikeout for Gant, and that'll be his third of the afternoon. You brought up a great point. We were talking uh, earlier, a couple hours ago. Really, the golden era of baseball. When you look back at all those Hall of Famers from. Let's say 60 to 75, 1960 to 75. Some of the greatest players ever in your era in which you pitched. Yeah, and and you, when you ask me if I was, you know, mad all the time, well, you get to the Hall of Fame and you look and you see all of those guys there, and you say, well, no wonder I didn't get <laughs> great. Right. Yeah, I couldn't do much. They, they're all here. It's incredible. We had Steve Carlton in the booth last night. Do you remember teaching him the slider? I do. I do. Uh, most of it, uh, we were on a flight from. 
from uh, St. Louis to San Francisco and he and I spent the entire time on that flight talking about a slider. Then he ended up having a better slider than me. That didn't make me happy. I told, that, that? I told that story last night about when you cross the room <laughs> with I said Steve Carlton go down having the best slider in the history of the game and Bob got about six inches from me and said the best left handed slider. <laughs> <laughs> you got to emphasize that. Oh yeah. I had great. a nasty slider. I was talking to one of the kids in the uh, dugout just a while ago. Luke Weaver. I, I, Weaver. I was talking to Weaver about that slider. He says how do you hold your slider. And I showed him and I said well I had two sliders. I had one that had a real tight spin. I also had one that had a bigger spin and I would get two strikes. There's a fly ball into right. I'd get two strikes and uh, and I throw the uh, the bigger one. I said but now you got to be careful about that one because sometimes you hang it and when you hang it you know, a guy will take the TV set and he'll put it on the hole. He run in and grab a bat and then he'll turn it on and <laughs> swing at it. Bob Gibson is with us today.